Hello there YouTube, it's Chris Chapman back again with another tutorial. Just about done with this 58 Chevy Impala. Um, just got done posting online the video for the uh, chrome trim. This is the car where it sits now with all the chrome foil put on it. All this chrome trim and foil on here is all aluminum foil by Reynolds Wrap. I did it all with glue, bare metal foil adhesive, there you go. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Also have uh, applying acrylic paints, applying floor polish, polishing floor polish, some other videos. Just stay on here on my YouTube channel and check them out. Now is what we're going to do on this one here, we're going to show you how I do my panel lines. This one here doesn't have a lot because the doors are opened up, the trunk comes off. Doors were already opened up on this kit. I didn't actually cut them open and stuff. I have yet to do that and plan to one day, but just scares me, makes me shake. <laughs> so what we're going to do is go ahead and get started with this. First thing, oh, yes, that's right. It's going to also use photo etch. I don't know if that's coming in very good or not. Maybe that'll help it. We're going to be putting some photo etch on here as well. Now I'm going to show you every little piece. Again, unlike my other videos, just little pieces here and there. Try to keep them so that they're turned down a little bit, not too long. So, to do the trunk lines, you can see right here, I've got to use a flat black acrylic paint and if you're going to be using these acrylics you're going to be doing a lot of base with the blacks like frames engine compartments just like that right there that there was actually a flat black and then I went and I put a semi gloss clear coat over the top of it just to seal it all in and it was airbrushed in there. Mix, you know, you take this, you mix it with your future, your windshield washer fluid. This particular one, I use windshield washer fluid. So if you take and buy you one of these, I have this flat ending gloss. But I usually just use this and then use a polyurethane or one of these Craft Smart varnishes got a satin color there's a gloss and there's the mat then these here you just brush on you don't even need to worry about spraying them or anything because when they dry clear they dry clear you don't see no brush marks or anything you know you want to put a pretty liberal coat on it and stuff make sure it's fairly thick get good coverage and get the effect out of the clear coat so but we're just going to use this right here the flat and I am going to be mixing it up with the LA's Totally Awesome Mop and Shine. Sorry. And that is going to break it down. Now with these paints and stuff, you can use wash, make a wash with them. And is what it is, is when you end up putting in your paint, you put enough water or washer fluid or you know floor polish to break it down really 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 thin and really 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 runny and the reason I like doing this with the future is you break it down to the point to where there's very little that's going to stick so you have to keep going over it and over it and it makes it to where it could come off and stuff problem that I have with that that a lot of people kind of don't think about is if it's thin like water it's not going to stay on there using the floor polish is going to add an adhesive element to the the pigments again after you've broken way way down so this is going to help it stick to the body and stay where you want it and you know this is going to be down inside the recesses along the panel lines and stuff so 
So that's the reason I like to use a floor polish to do this on the washes. Also, it works best on a gloss coat. It also works with uh, waxing. And I'll show you here because I have waxed this. It's all waxed, polished, and everything. And it helps the paint flow better towards where it's supposed to and stays where it's supposed to. And so, with that said, it helps it hold and adhere better inside the crevices and you don't need to do anything else now another thing that I want to bring to your attention is this is designed to go in and kind of take care of the uh, where the metals been cut the seams and you have your um, oh, what was I thinking you have your shadows that go inside let me show you on the door here now if I hold this up here you can see how the door has that black outline to it and it's because it's a shadow no lights getting in there and so it's a shadow if you'll notice something about that it's not shiny Shadows aren't shiny. You'll never see a sh shiny shadow follow you down the street. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I said that. I got it off. So you want to use a flat color. Now a lot of people, you know, like to use a black. Or if you're doing an orange car, you do a light gray. You know, myself, I look at that. And from seeing it here, and I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, it's basically a darker shade of the actual paint body. Because there is paint in there, and it does get some light, so it's going to show that. It's just not getting a lot of light that it makes it pop out and be bright. And so, that's what I'm going to do is show you how I mix it. Now, I am going to be using this, and sometimes it works to where you can put it in there and it shows up really nice and neat and things other times it just blends in with the paint with this particular color not real sure how well it's going to blend so I'm going to try it if it doesn't then we'll just go ahead and go with the black but I'd like to be able to try to stick with the body color just notice I got a little bit of glue on here I want to get that cleaned off here there we go Thought I had that all done, but I guess not. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera around, get it set up so that it's down here on my work area and you can be able to see and watch what I'm doing. So I will be right back. All right. I'm back. I want to make sure this is recording. <laughs> I had an issue before. Um... And throw these doors over here and out of the way because I'm done with them. So, is what I do. I get me a little palette mixing thing, and I want to turn around. And put a drop of paint. I don't need a whole lot because I'm just doing the trunk trim. Um do a, the same amount if not less but it's kind of hard come on fall off of there you can do it you can do it there we go then we'll go ahead and take and add uh, six or seven drops of the um, floor polish. Now is what I do for starters I got me my trusty little jug of um, windshield washer fluid that I use for washing my paint brushes when I'm using these acrylic paints stuff works great with it 
Looks like I'm about in need of changing this. I got a lot of sediment down in the bottom from all the work I've been doing. I'm going to turn around and take a good brush. I always like to make sure I get them wet. And that moisture kind of helps build up. So when you overload these, it keeps it from going up inside. Andy X taught me that little trick. Another great builder I've mentioned before in previous videos. And so I'm going to use that there brush. And with this being kind of a metallic copper, just not real sure if it's going to shine that or show that color through. And you kind of see the color that it's coming out maybe. I don't know if that's going to come up right. It looks like I want to add a little bit more bronze to try to get that metallic color. Just one more drop. And you kind of just got to play with it. And like I said, if it doesn't come up showing up right and things, you know, doesn't fit the color, then you just go over it with the black. And there's nothing wrong with black, but I like to try to match it the best that I can and you definitely want to stir this and stir it and stir it to where you get it broken down really really good you want it to flow now that goes right there I'm sorry my dog just almost fell off the bed she just jerked and <laughs> that silly kid can I get this cleaned off so just that little bit of swirling and this is completely cleaned out the metallic everything nice and gone okay you want to get yourself I'm going to be using a fine detail brush Oh, this one doesn't have the number on it. Like a 005 or something like that. Very, 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 very... It's kind of hard to see. Fine tip brush. And the way that these washes work, with the metallic in this, you get a little bit of the shiny stuff, so it might work differently, but you want to hold it in there, let it load up, Then you just come in here and you touch a corner. Let's see if it comes down. And it's going to want me to run it, the metallic in it. You just take it. You don't even have to be clean about it. And I know a lot of you guys have seen this done many, many times, so bear with me on this part. Some of you might just tune in to watch the photo etch application. But I'm going to kind of do this in steps, so you got to deal with all of it, or you can always skip ahead. You can see, I'm not really even able to see what I'm doing, the angle that I'm holding this. I just know where the line is. So, I'm going to try to bring it. Now, a lot of the washes will actually just, you touch it and it'll flow down. And this one's not wanting to do it with the uh, metal pigments in there. That's okay, we'll just brush it on. We'll get this across the back. Now 
Now keep in mind this stuff here dries pretty quick. Wipe off your excess. Quick little swirl in here. See I have no paint coming off at all. Rinses it off that quick and that easy. Now I'm going to sit the paintbrush over here and show you this mess that I just made. You can see how it's all kind of gunked up in there. Wish I had better lighting here, but I don't. So I turn around and with a damp Q tip. You just dampen it in some water. You can even use this. Dip it in there, roll it. And then you just lightly start with where you started. And you can see it just wipe away. Kind of brush it. And you want to just do it lightly. You don't need to add no pressure to it. Again, not a lot of water. You don't want the water to come off of the Q-tip. And get down inside the groove because then it's going to pull up what you just put down inside the groove. And it might take a couple Q tips. And try not to use the same one over and over. I'm going to go with water here. That's pulling it up pretty good a little bit of a nick in the paint there that's all right just kind of threw this one together real quick to do a couple of these video tutorials that people have been asking for for a while you can actually go over to Model Car, uh, Model Car Magazine Forum and I've got a complete build up on this that I was doing over there. So it's from the beginning to the end, the sanding and pictures and stuff if you feel like you want to go and check it out. Just look up my name and then look up the uh, my content and it'll show up. So that's coming out really good. Sorry for the little pauses, kind of concentrating and thinking. And there you go. You can see how it kind of darkened in the panel lines. It's nothing new, no big secret, no hard way to do it. Some people just use a black sharpie, a fine point sharpie, and do it. I'm going to go ahead, thicken it up a little bit, add one more coat. This one here I'm going to be a little bit more careful on, just so that I can... Saves a lot of clean up. And if you take your time at it, you don't have to be all sloppy. But when you can't see what you're doing because you're trying to hold it up in front of a camera, it's not going to hurt you to slop it on. And you just kind of build it up to where it's got a nice, good dark...
go ahead and get this. And we're almost done. Might be off camera for just a second here. With this latest coat, it shouldn't take very long to wipe it down. Now, what I do, windshield washer fluid is, uh, or Windex, any kind of wipes. Kind of harsh on the uh, paint and the floor polish. So what I do is I get one of these wipes. It's been sitting out for a few hours. It's still damp, but barely. And after I get done with that, let's kind of go and buff that thing out a little bit. Make sure I get everything off of it. You know, this is something you could go and buff out the whole car. And it really does bring out more shine. It's kind of the same thing as a dryer sheet with this uh, floor polish on it. Really improves everything. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and finish rubbing this down here in a minute. Get done with this part of the tutorial. And then I keep going. <laughs> but there you go. Hopefully you guys can see how the panel lines kind of fill in. Get it up here, change it to where you can see the way that looks across there. Um, that's all there is to it. Just be able to kind of add some definition to it. So, that's the first part of the tutorial here. I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff cleaned up. And get the photo etch ready and stuff. And then I'm going to wipe the whole car down, make sure it's all dust free. And we'll come back and I'll show you on that part of it. We just use regular window glue. Testers. Uh, been wanting to try that uh, crystal clear or something like that that I've been hearing a lot of people talk about. But I have this and it's available so I'm using it. So let me get this cleaned up and I will be back. Get more of this done. 